Okie dokie, so this is our Pilates session together. We're gonna to come to lying down. We're gonna come into your comfortable relaxation position. Whatever that is for you, whether you want the layers, so keeping your layers on, whether you want an extra blanket, flip side, you might need more ventilation, but you might like a cushion. So I'm gonna come on down and join you down on the mat, just wiggling about, getting a little comfortable for the shoulders and for the lower back. So you might like to keep the knees bent, you might also just want to have your hands sort of resting on your rib cage or even on your belly, if that's nice for you to kind of have a calmer option for the shoulders. Otherwise, just gently pop them out to the side. So you're just breathing in for me and breathing out. So every time you have an inhale, let it rise up. Every time you have that exhale, just let it gently fall away and down through the body. Let the inhale rise quite nice and naturally and let the exhale just be present with a, the idea of it drawing you down a little bit. So if that means you need to lift and wiggle again, if it means you want to actually stretch and then get into another position, another relaxation position, it could be soles of the feet together because that's quite a nice one to let the pelvic area and into your hips and into the inner thighs have some release. But equally to that, you might be fine in the very initial position that you find yourself in. But having the eyes closed is just one of our ways of being present with you and your body. So just taking your time, inhaling and exhaling, breathing in and breathing out. Just letting the inhale rise up, letting the exhale fall away and just taking our time. So taking your time to let the inhale have a slightly fuller option. So you're breathing into the idea that the exhale now has that same width or depth to it. Creating this version of breath for yourself that makes sense and makes it feel like it's quite natural still. So even though you want to put a little bit more effort into it, even though we can put more effort into it, still make it manageable and then over time you'll just get into deeper and deeper rhythms so breathing inhaling breathing for the exhale breathing that natural one into the next so letting it flow inhale to exhale taking your time breathing through it breathing in and breathing out when you're ready for a little bit more, it could be that the inhale does find a little bit more depth into your chest and that it finds a little bit more width perhaps through the chest and through the upper back and the shoulders. But when you're ready for it, let's put a little bit of core awareness into our exhale and a little bit of core engagement comes after that. Core engagement would be from the very base of our pelvis, drawing in and drawing up. Core engagement could be every other breath. It could be every breath. It's entirely up to you. So taking a rhythmical start still for your breathing, taking it as it comes and just breathing your way through that inhale into that exhale. Whether you want a little bit more is entirely up to you because I would like you to still have that flow. I still want that attention to detail. When we move from the relaxation, to stretching and releasing. We also want to have control. We want to have that rhythm. We don't need to push anything. We want to be able to maintain the rhythm of the breathing. So getting comfortable with it now, getting comfortable with the idea of the core engagement for me. Inside your exhale, if that's good. Otherwise, keeping a core awareness is a lovely alternative. So give me maybe three or four of your deepest version of a zipping up, a drawing in, a little mild hold inside that exhale. And then on the inhale, have the calm. Breathing in and breathing out. Taking your time and just letting yourself have, once those three or four of the greater intensity for the core engagement have kind of passed into the calm, take that calm again. Take the calm for the breathing. If you're fine where you are, but you want to have kind of that knees into the chest, so you might have had the feet down. If you want the full body stretch first, absolutely you can. I might just have a very gentle rock and a gentle little wiggle through my ankles. And then same is true. If you want to have a little mini curl up, you can have a curl up 
bell up and a hug. And it doesn't have to be as strong as maybe later on in our session together, because you're still warming up the idea of these movement patterns. I'm gonna let myself just hang. So I've got strong arms, I've already got a strong core, and I've got a strong connection with my back against the mat to create these circular movements through my hips. So letting them rock and roll, letting myself come in and out here. And we're gonna carry on with that same theme. I'm gonna put my feet down and then have a rolling version here, because you might actually, by not holding on, have a bigger and a sort of fuller circle, fuller range of motion here. So just lift and rotate, getting into the up and around, and then you get to put the foot back down again. If you can, just have a version that just sort of walks across and has a little bit more kick out to it. And if you want to wiggle on the way through, you could just go slightly on the angle. You could give me a push press. So if you're okay to give me like a V shape for a kick out and a push press and even a wiggle out there, we'll be getting into the inner thighs and we'll just be walking them out now and gently flicking if you want to into a hamstring walk out. But all of these things are relative. If you'd like to go back to just hugging the knees in at any time, I'm bending the knees and doing a little crunch, no crunch for the upper body, just starting to activate our lower abdominals right down in your pelvis for me and just walking things out. When you're ready for it, just walk it out to, and up to wherever your hold is. If you'd like a flexed foot, you may be able to hold the toe. If you've got a band or a strap, you might like that as well. And you're just breathing in and breathing out. When you come down, just pop it down. If you did not want to have the curl up there, please just go with an option that makes sense. You may like a bent knee to get into the idea of that extension. So on my left side is always my tight side. So I actually decided the bend was a good idea, but on the first side, I was already there. You might be the same. Bringing the other leg up and just hold on to the toes. I'm not suggesting that you want to straighten out the legs of the double leg, but just holding here. If you do want to, then absolutely you could just release and come back in. So hug the knees, maybe hold the toes, curl up for me. This might be enough. You don't have to go any further than this. You could lift a little bit and then you could release to hold our ankle. I'm sorry, hold our calves. Have a little open and a rock and a roll. Have the hug in, hands behind and on the calves, and that might be you. Letting everything have its place. If you're ready for the next challenge, then you go ahead. If you feel like you'd prefer to pair things down a touch, then know your body and know what it needs. So just rolling in, rolling out, sliding up, and then here, hold behind the knees, and just let yourself come up for me. I'm just gonna shift that only because of the camera. And we're going to do a little version of our boat pose, but we're going to hold um, either the legs because we feel confident, or you can hold yourself upright a little bit more by having the hands down on the floor. If you've got a ball or a firm cushion, you might like to wedge it in behind you. So my feet down, I'm sorry, hand down and feet down option starts here. Little soft knees and you can lift and give me, it's like doing a crunch, but you're still doing a boat pose because you're doing a walking version and you still got that lovely straight spine. So it's a little bit like doing a tricep dip with our alternating boat legs. We just rolled up in this way. So I'm gonna hold behind my knees. Tummy's engaged, so I'm really drawing in. Try not to round unless that makes it more comfortable. But here you can see where I've crept up and lost my head and my neck. So I prefer as if we could have Proud chest, nice upright spine. Lift with a little point and a little kick out leg. Tummy's engaged to get that leg up. And you could keep holding here the entire time. Or you could have the opposite arm come out, hold, switch for me. And if you can see, I've just started to extend my legs. That extension is more challenging and it's gonna require more core engagement and also more thigh engagement. If you're okay, and you wanna go back to tabletop legs, you could keep the arms out entirely, so we're not holding on any longer. And you can have the tabletop or the slight extension, or for me, maybe it's helpful to have a little lean back and then a lovely long line. 
kick it out. If you're okay with putting in an extra hold, why don't you do that as well for yourself? So breathe in, breathe it out, breathe in, breathe it out. Should we just do one more? Because we're still warming up. What I'm going to suggest is just have a little mini stretch. Let me just part those legs a bit. Have a little mini stretch through your back. And then when, if you're ready to come with me for a hold, you could have hands down and have one leg hold and then maybe just halfway hold the other. If you're okay with the holding of the legs, then why don't we hold the double? And what I've done is brought my knees quite close to the chest. So if you want that, walk in, hug, keep the lovely upright spine, and this could be you staying put here. Trying to zip up our inner thighs, and if you wanted to, maybe just one and then the other arm out, but keeping the tabletop, because we are still in the beginning phases, this is a lovely hold without kind of pushing too far into that challenge zone. And then when you're ready for it, come down again. I'm just gonna move out my way so you've got the hold of me on camera, and I'm stretching out with whatever version of this that really makes sense for you. If you've got shiny trousers and it's quite nice to sort of slide in, have a micro hold and come out. If you're okay with the idea of holding, but you just don't want to fold into it, you can hold with the core, hold with your strong thighs, and maybe just let the head be a little heavier and draw you down. But you're just breathing in for me and breathing out. Taking our time, softening the elbows over time if you get that far. If you don't want to, then please just listen to your body. You might be fine at a previous stage. And then let's just slide ourselves out. Coming round, we're gonna come onto the all fours at any time, so we're just gonna go into, we're gonna go into cat cow first. But if you'd like to have a chair, a cabinet or something else, we're going to go into some push-ups. And you can actually do push-ups against the wall where you're elevated and you're in quite a high plank position. So those options when you've got the chair or a cabinet just means it's less pressure on your wrist. So decide where you are, a little bit of everything, and I'll just talk us through when we get there. So for now though, let's have the parallel of arms and legs. If you would like to just make this and take the flexion out of your wrist because you know push-ups are coming your way, that might be a good idea. And immediately, probably even before I've actually spoken to you, your body will be speaking about the stretch it needs, it will be telling you whether it needs a hold, and it will be helping you through this undulating movement. So let yourself have the flat back, let yourself have the calm. If you want a little bit more, maybe tuck the chin into the chest and really have a push out. So I've changed to be on my heel of my hands. Push out to stretch the arm line, stretch the upper back. You can have a mini skill lean back as well to give you more stretch. And then soften the elbows and let yourself look up. So looking up is just a little bit of chin lift, stretching through the abdominals. If you're okay with head one way, head the other. And then you might naturally have a little gentle wiggle through and let the head go just a little bit. And then from here, we've got options because just before we go into our push-ups, we're going to open up the chest a little bit. So you can have wide legs and you can have a child's pose for your version of this, oh, sorry, child's pose legs for your version of thread the knee, where you're going to tuck under and pull out. If you prefer the box position we've just been in, you could go under here, let the head and shoulders come down, T-shape with the arms or more if that becomes available. Just because I've done one, I'm going to do the other side in the same way. So this could be an option for your thread the needle, as could the wide knees and the underneath. So coming under, and then I reach out. So this one for me, I do quite like it because it actually stretches your hip flexor or hip flexors at the same time. And you get a little bit of that rotation. You get the chest opener. There's just maybe a little bit more in it. So I'm going to do one more on that side. And then like I said, you can have an elevated position. So if you had a chair, you could have the base of the chair with your hands flat or kind of wrapped around a chair to do your push up. And you've been a lovely long line from the head to your toes, to your heels in a plank position, but the elevation will prevent any 
downward pressure. We don't have to go into a full plank. I'm going to keep you on the knees if you want to be here with me. Good. If you've got a mat, a good option for chest is to have the thumbs at the edge and the rest of your fingertips off the other side. And then I'm just going to suggest we walk back a little bit. We zip up the legs and we just take the first few moments to see what's happening with these elbows. Are they going out? Do I feel like I'm rounding? Am I kind of buckling through the elbows? What's happening with you? What's your depth? You don't have to go too far, but it's in the name. So push up away from the chair, the wall or the floor. Use the core, lift a little bit more from within. So connect to those abdominals and give you the exhale breath when you're doing that. So I'm gonna breathe in down. It's kind of like you're putting your face down in that space you created between your hands. Breathe in, breathe out. Keep going for me. I'm having a jump situation. <laughs> so keep going and give me just three. And two. And one. From here, I'm just going to suggest our child's pose legs, but are gentle, or you want a little bit more oomph, <laughs> from the shoulder rolls or any shape flick or movement that helps you stretch through the forearms and your wrists. So I'm flicking and shaking. From here, I'll just hold my fingertips and just have a very gentle pull. So I do want you to stretch, but you don't have to go crazy for things to work for you, for things to feel like they're beneficial. And if you want to double up or do any more of anything, please do. What we're going to do is basically do the same thing where we're going to do a thread the needle, but we're going to come in to do it from our side plank. So in our side plank, we're going to go on the elbow. And by all means, you can always come to lie down and have a rest and just reach the arms from the floor up to the ceiling and maybe behind, but you wouldn't get the tuck part of it. So we're elevated here so that you've got the room between my rib cage or side of the waist and my mat or the floor. So I'm going to tuck under. And if you do want just a very calm option, you don't even have to take it up. You could take it around sort of over your hip if you have any tightness through your shoulders or tightness anywhere else. It could be the chest because that's where we're stretching. But if you're okay to do so, keep more of a glued up option from the pelvis all the way down my thighs, all the way down to my knees, especially when I'm leaning or reaching back. So there's a little lean and it's more reach that happens from our upper back and our chest and the arm taking you there. So from here, if you would like an extra challenge, you don't necessarily have to have a leg lift if you want and you know that a leg lift or a leg reach out, so you don't have to take it up, but you could get it out in line with your hips. That might be a nice option for you, but otherwise I'm gonna suggest, and it might be too much for the shoulder you're leaning on, I'm gonna suggest lifting and having the side plank here where knees stay glued. We breathe in, we breathe out. So let yourself be guided by what you're feeling at each point. So when you change or you elevate an exercise, just reassess, see if it's good and carry on if you are feeling like you're in charge and you're lovely and strong in it. Let's pause and come down for me. Let's do our little mermaid legs. This jumper's not doing me any favors today. <laughs> so I've got my leg, the one that was just down on the mat or the one that was closest as my one in front. You can have a hybrid of this. So you can have legs out in a different orientation. You can have a cross-legged position, but I'm just going to put the arch of my foot sort of where that knee is. And I'm going to gently come around, but I do want to encourage that hip flexor stretch. And I love the wrapping around. So for a change, what we're going to do is we're going to stay in the stretch and we're going to reach the arm up. So the same arm that's kind of open to the rest of my body. So I've got my left hand down, my left leg in front, right leg behind, right hand or right arm doing my reaching. So lift up, elevate yourself and breathe. So every time you lift, give me some core engagement to hold this posture and keep in a lovely controlled fashion. I do have a soft elbow. You can have a straighter arm, but I think a soft elbow is a good option. Breathe in, breathe out. Challenge is set. 
if you can perhaps do a wrap and wrap. So let me just come this way a little bit. So hand is planted, strong arm. Could have a soft elbow if you like it. Could make a fist, not as easy. The back leg and this open arm, instead of reaching and reaching, which sometimes might creep into your back, we're gonna do a wrap and a wrap situation. So we're gonna wrap the leg and then you can come down and touch down every time or you can give it to me as an in and out where you're actually hovering. So you could wrap and you can give me a little kind of crunch movement to it. So you reach and pull, stretch and pull. Breathe in to breathe out. If it's too much on this hip and you just wanna come back and maybe reassess that previous exercise so that it's some form of side plank, you absolutely can because you'd still be working these obliques. So just give it to me for maybe three more, two more, one more. Lovely. This leg that was out, bring it round. Bring the other one with, <laughs> but bring it round. Let me come this way again. So we're now going to have flexed feet. If you already did this, don't worry, you can repeat yourself. But I'm just going to have flexed feet because I had pointed toes or I had flexed feet going around there. But you were just giving yourself the mix and match of stretching both and giving yourself both options. Stretch it out again, maybe hold the ankles. You don't have to go down if you don't want to, but maybe the gaze, instead of continuing to look at me, maybe listen to me and look at your toes and just breathe in to breathe out. We've got to go on the other side. I'm just going to move my mat slightly. And you know whether you are feeling strong on this arm and this elbow and this shoulder to come into the elbow side plank version of this, or whether you want to lie down and just gently lift those arms so resetting elbow in line with the hip got the idea again of coming from the base of my pelvis down to the knees but inside to the lift all the way to my rib cage tuck however calm or strong you want to go so i probably would always advise having the karma to start you off especially when you swap sides because there's not always the exact same pattern and rhythm or range of motion when we've got these opposites. When you're doing single-sided exercises, it's always worth just having a little bit of a ginger option to it. It's going a little calmer. And then here, when you do want to go a little bit further back, why don't I add a little hole potentially? And where's that hole gonna come from? It's my core, it's the connection with these inner thighs together and my knees. And we just take it through and up and out. Let's do a last one. Lovely. And then from here, if we remember, I've totally forgotten. <laughs> we have some, so if you want to carry on where you are, I've had some of the elevated hip, I totally forgot. So if you can, come up for me, and you're just going to give me, this maybe just do about three to five under here. Tucking and threading and lifting. We've got those lifted hips. Let's do Maybe next one as your last one. And then we go into that mermaid. My brain jumped on to the next thing. <laughs> so mermaid has the stretch element first and then we'll work out what you feel is a good option on this side. So if you want to tuck your foot round further and sort of sit up that way, if you want to have your foot flatter and be sort of on the inside of the ankle on a flexed foot, it's kind of relative. It might be how the foot feels, here, if you can see, my foot is actually on my thigh. It's not on the knee. So that's where that went naturally. But I'm just going to nudge myself around. Be able to, once again, find the lift from your pelvis. Have the proud chest. And we'll just have that holding option first. So I want to try and stretch those hip flexors or that hip flexor on that side. So I have straightened out, lifted, and just already done a little bit of a wrap for myself. So lifting over from here, if you're okay, let me just nudge back a little bit more camera wise. So from here, lifting and lowering. So I've got the stretch. I've got potentially a glute squeeze. I've got the lifted chest, the proud chest, and I'm lifting from the core. Every time you lift the arm, maybe give a micro hold. Breathe in, breathe it out. Lovely, slow, calm, rhythmical breaths, along with the rhythmical movement here. Hold it for me. And then if you remember, 
I changed our minds and went round into a wrap. So let's do that. If you can lift, again, flexed or pointed foot back there. I think I'm gonna do pointed because I'm pointing with my fingers. It kind of leads itself to be the same. In my mind's eye, everything's the same. <laughs> it's a little bit easier to have that rhythm. And I feel like I am pointing the toe as though I want to touch something and that gets me round maybe a little bit more. If you wanna pull in, and give me a little bit of a crunch element to this. Let's throw that into the mix if you want to. But we've got about five more to go. Five, four, three, two, and one. Same thing, but this time maybe just bring the soles of our feet together. So soles of, as in we're having a stretch. <laughs> soles of the feet together. If you need it, not necessarily even from this class together, but the head and neck mobilization, sometimes we only do them through daily life when we've got a problem, when we've got a tightness. But sometimes in a Pilates class, you are holding yourself under tension. And again, it's not necessarily this one that you feel it, but it's a nice idea to get some movement for the top of the spine, the shoulders, upper back, and all of that right up there at the top. So from here, I'm just gonna move my mat again. We're gonna to come to lying down on our tummies and we're gonna do, they are called leg kicks, but I'm going to call them um, more of a, a gentle, because <laughs> I want you to keep it pared down, a leg lengthener, shall we say. So you're gonna stay down, rest the head if you feel more appropriate. I'll have mine up just so that you can hear me and I can sort of check, because I'm videoing obviously, check my body position. You might want to do the same thing and be able to see yourself but when you're lifting the leg, it's a lovely pointed toe and it's as one, so strong thigh, and it's not a bent leg. I'm not throwing that leg up in the air and creating arch. We're just lifting and lowering. So it's kind of lift, hover, lift, hover, and we'll be swapping side to side. So I'm gonna come down and meet you. If you're not already there, wiggle it out for me. Wiggle it out through your tummy. So I've got a crossed arm option. And if you'd like, you can just have a little rest, pop the head to the side, or pop the head down. So like I said, <coughs> excuse me, this is going to be for the core, for the legs, for the glutes, and it comes as one. So if you are able to give me, so where you are right now, do you have your rib cage, your belly, your hips, your pelvis, do you feel all of that against the mat? When you're ready for me, just breathe in. So if you wanna keep the head down, keep the head down. Breathe in and then on the exhale, lift the core, but nothing else. So all that feels like for me is my tummy button pulls away from the mat and I feel that there's an openness, there's some space between myself through the tummy button and the sort of circle around my belly and my mat. As you lessen that and as you come down, as it were, into that next inhale, then just try to have the calm and the release. So breathing in, when you're ready for it, zip up, exhale, this is your hold. It's just the abdominals, it's absolutely nothing else. Breathe in, breathe out. Zip up through the pelvis, engage the core, hover as it were, and release. Now we wanna put that together with the legs. So potentially you've got your legs in a kind of parallel. It's entirely up to you. I wouldn't say you want them wide, I'd say parallel or there and about. Have a pointed toe. If you want to be up like I am with your chest up, just be mindful of your neck. Look straight out. You're breathing in. On the exhale, hover the leg. So really and truly, it is the strong, strong thigh engagement, the strong glute engagement, the strong core engagement, but there's barely any lift. It is a hover. It is a hold and you really are in charge of taking your time. Breathe in, breathe it out. What you can throw into the mix is a little touch of elevation through the upper back, challenging the core to help you ever so gently lift my rib cage off of the mat. So really and truly, there are layers always but on this one, the layers are underneath. I don't really see it from out the top. Yes, I've got a little bit of movement, but there's so much 
power inside that creates this lift, this elevation, and this hover. So take it for one more each side. It's a lift and a hover hold. But when you're done, plant those hands. And if you want to, do it slowly or do it with a sweeping movement. I'm just going to move forward, but you lift up and you press and reach it back for me. When you want to come out, you might just come to the all fours and the flat back. And you can give me a parallel or a wide leg for a child's pose. But equally, you can put a little bit more in. So you want to give me the cap. Hold the cap. If you want to push back, you push back. If you want to plant the hands, you could come up. So I'm not quite in the right positioning for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to round, push back. I'm going to soften on the elbows, rise up, lift, stretch. Roll it and press it down onto the elbows, lift it up, stretch it out and just undulate through your body here. Be mindful of where you need to be with this stretch and with this release. So from here, I'm gonna suggest that we go back where you came from, which is down on our tummy. So again, from the base of the pelvis to the rib cage, that is all working, lovely and strong, getting that resistance, um, sorry, getting that feedback from the mat, from the floor by lifting away, and we're gonna go into some heel kicks. If you were elevated with me and kind of looking up a little bit, you might like to rest the head and take the shoulders and the upper back out of the equation on this particular version, because we're gonna do alternating kicks at the bottom. So we are going into the heel kick part of this. So down you come, like I said, you could lay down, you could close the eyes, Wiggle out just through the chest, through the shoulders, so you feel comfy where you are, just like we do in our relaxation. But here, you're going to kick the bottom. It is a movement pattern that you are still in control of. So trying to avoid a kick and the whole of my torso kind of buckling in response. So head down if you prefer. Breathing in when you're ready for it. Exhale, kick the bottom. Inhale. Swapping side to side is a good option. If you'd like to feel it maybe just a touch stronger and you would like some repetitions all on one side in succession, please do. If you would like to have the challenge of a little extra hold, pop that into the mix. So you pick it and you might lift a little bit through the shoulders, you might lift and hold and then release. So you're holding your hamstring curl, you're holding it with the core, you're holding it so that you're nowhere near the lower back, it's everything else that's lovely and engaged. Do you want a double? And squeeze and hold. Double point away, maybe it's a longer pause. You could just do a couple of those and then go back to the single-sided option. But we breathe in, we breathe it out. Again, it's harder when you've got the double not to have that jerky movement. So anticipate the legs are coming. Anticipate it with your core engagement and just give it your best shot for me. Breathe in, breathe out. Here we are to come to pause. So if you need to do another rep, let's do another rep. When we come up, we're just going to stretch. So we're just going to sit in our cross-legged position and just sit nice and tall and just open up. Because we've been lying down, you could do more cat-cow, but it's just nice to do different versions on a theme. So we're gonna roll it out and just kind of shake it out. Because now that we've been working the legs, we're gonna work your upper body. So we're gonna sit here in the cross-legged or some other hybrid. So you can have one leg in, one leg out, and vice versa. You could have both legs out. It's all relative to you, but lift up for me from the base of that pelvis. So thinking of it, the tailbone's down on the floor, the pelvic area, lift it up rather than hinge or rather than over arch, just lift with a lovely straight spine. Stay here with this core engagement. So same as I got you to do lying down on the mat, here I want you to see if you can actively engage these lower abdominals. So you're not doing anything apart from breathing for me. Breathing in, on the exhale, zip up. So this is me 
dipping up from the base of my pelvis all the way up to my lower rib cage. And then I need to release. So breathing in on the exhale, zip up and hold. There's a, ch a chance that you could see me kind of challenge that and draw in and hold. And then there's a little bit release. So I'm over exaggerating that a little bit. But breathing in, exhale, kind of wrapping around that corset, around your waist, and then release. Breathe in again for me. On the inhale, zip up, and if you can, I don't often talk about it, but the pelvic floor has a front, a middle, and a back, so back passage. If you're able to lift front and back, you'll be lifting the pelvic floor entirely from within. So breathe in. On the exhale, lift it up, hold it. So all that you're doing here is support work from the inside out for anything else we do now or in another session. But for right now, we're gonna come into our Cossack arms. So the good posture is already there for me. We've already got that lovely engagement. Let's have those um, crossed over arms. Just get yourself ready for it. So relax the shoulders, but lift it with the chin, lift it with the crown of the head. If you simply want to take the arms out, and if you can see, obviously, I've got my gaze straight to the front. I've got absolutely no twisting and no rotation happening. Besides opening up my chest, challenging my arm lines and taking it back. But on that one, I've crept into it. <laughs> but if you can, you take your gaze because that gives you a little bit of extra rotational movement to put into this lovely challenge. Keep the space between your ears and your shoulders. Keep the challenge, I know you're rotating, but keep the challenge of the core engaged and the zip up from within. When you're ready for a little extra, it might be a holding option. So let's do it on this one. Breathing in, breathing out. Bring it in, same on that other side. When you're in on the next one, changing once again. Here, I'm gonna take the other arm out. Have both arms out, bring both hands in, take both arms out, and then in and down. <laughs> so shake it out for me. What we're going to do is we're gonna do a seated version of some shoulder work and some dumb waiter, which is shoulder blade work. So shoulder work, we're gonna do some pressing up and some open close, and then we're gonna keep the elbows down. I often do this as a standing version, but I'm gonna do a seated one today. So glue the elbows in and have your lovely good posture. So again, here, we wanna sit strongly on those sitting bones, lift from the base of the pelvis, have your lovely proud chest for me, palms up, elbows stay glued, to sort of the rib cage or the hip bone area. We breathe in, we breathe it out. We take our time, we work our way through your very best pausing version as well as our very best slow and steady version. So we inhale when the hands come together and we exhale as you open the chest and you squeeze between those shoulder blades. So challenging yourself to keep that lovely upright posture, that strong stance for me to facilitate this open close and pause it there. If you feel <laughs> with your lovely gorgeous posture and you just want to shake and wiggle it to the front, then please do. I mentioned shoulder blades. Now we're just going to work through biceps and shoulders. So if you need to just bring it down a touch, you just let the elbows drop. They do not have to stay in line. But I want to avoid this as always, where I lose my head in my neck. I'd like us to keep with the proud chest, keep with the upright spine, and we're gonna have palms facing us to then turning out. So elbows and arms, sorry, elbows at shoulder height and the length of our arm here, our forearm, if you can cross it across your eye line, drawing together. They don't have to come together if your shoulders won't quite facilitate that for right now. So you can have it just with a slither of space between. I'm doing a very strong pull back. If you'd like to, you can pull back lean and we press the arms. So if you want to, you can have that with a pause, bring the arms up, 
have a little lean as you open and you do a sort of tricep kickback. But it's very strong in the sense that I'm using my core, I'm not grounding or collapsing, and each part of that movement is strong. And if you want to just sweep back into the next rep, then that's what I'll be doing. So arms up, good posture, open, lean, press, and I'm gonna sweep straight back up. Have a little pause, have the open and pause, and the down and the push out, and then come back up. Not gonna do loads of them, we're just gonna concentrate on some nice strong repetition. So when I go to that tricep movement, I have leg forward and my gaze is down at the floor. I'm gonna breathe in, exhale, breathe it out. Just sweep it through, open it up, press it out. We're gonna do two more together. Open strong, little lean, press. Last one, open. Press, lovely. Might need that shake out, might need the roll, might need, so I just went straight into a, a sort of a diagonal <laughs> for my head, neck and shoulders. That might be you as well. But then we're ready and waiting for us to come round and we're already there or halfway there for your relaxation. But we're just gonna come down with that little extra layer of core engagement. So give me a roll down, give me your knees into the chest, why don't you close your eyes already? Breathing in, breathing out. We've been sitting for a little bit, so why don't we put this ankle mobilization into play? And if you want to have a gentle hamstring stretch, where you're just really holding that leg with the soft knee, just being mindful that if it's there for you, there's some extension you could pop into the mix, along with more wiggle and movement. And then whatever you do on one side, repeat it for me on the other. So you can hold that knee with a bent leg, the tabletop position, and let the leg be very heavy in your hands is actually a passive way, again, of stretching your hip flexor. Let's reach out, reach up, wiggle if it's appropriate. And then where were you on our beginning, in our beginning portion and our relaxation? I'm gonna have that relaxing element through the hips, the pelvis, and those inner thighs by putting the soles of the feet together. I've also got my eyes closed. I've actually crossed over and interlaced my hands over my rib cage just for a change. But by all means, let the backs of the hands be heavy on your mat or on the floor and let the arms just gently open out. So you can extend that and take your legs into a V-shape for me if you would prefer. But just being mindful of what are good options for you that you can maintain. So we're here for a little bit of extra calm and extra softness through the body by concentrating once more on our breathing together. Let the inhale rise, let the exhale fall away and let there be a softness and a lightness that really, although I do focus on the inhale, I really want you to focus on the exhale to also have lightness. I would often say, let it draw you down, let yourself get deeper, but don't get bogged down necessarily in them having their separate entities, just really making the breath flow for me. It's for you, it's for your relaxation, it's for the calm through the mind and the calm through the body, and just being present enough to ideally let go. So you can let go in the inhale, you can let go in the exhale, you can let go with the breathing, and you're gonna let all of that tension just wash over you. We will have worked to tone muscles, we will have worked to hold, especially like in that mermaid position, we were holding quite intense position, but wherever you are with what your body is feeling right now, guiding you through the mind and the body to just kind of push through it, and gently press your way to the kind of other side of this breath. So you'll have the tension, but we wanna push you through to the softer side of things, to the accepting, to the releasing, to the softening from top to toe. So letting yourself be present is really the key. Letting yourself have the flow of the breath that's appropriate to you. So it doesn't have to be too big. It's not necessarily a sort of smaller scale breath. I do want you to breathe into your body. 
and just let everything have that calm. Relaxing through the forehead, relaxing through the jawline and the temples, relaxing where the jaw and the head and the neck all combine. Breathing into the chest for me, breathing into that openness of the upper back, feeling that letting go where you do let your body get a little bit closer to the mat. You do feel that softening of the muscles and you're just really taking your time to let go and have a belly breath. So we don't need any more core engagement anymore. Just breathe in, nice big inhale. Ooh, a nice big sigh, inhale. Exhale. Just do a couple more of those in your time frame and your length of breath. And as and when you have done a couple, you want to come and join me. We're going to have that full body stretch, the hug to the knees or hug of the knees to the chest, a rock and roll in some description so you can massage the lower back. And then I'm already here. And we're just going to have those rolling shoulders that are on their own. So one is going back. The other one's ready to receive. And then from here, you're coming front and front, rolling, rolling. And then lift up and turn and twist. Pause in the center. I'm holding my knees just for a little bit more resistance. If you'd like a little bit more, you can have the hands. You can have one in front, one behind. And it's a lighter version. You can also have a reaching version. So I'm just gonna reach through the midline as I do a little lean back, and then have a stronger rotation where we hold that position. I'm pushing gently against my leg or against the back of my knee. And then from here, big, strong C curve. Interlace behind, lift up. As you come round, we are all done. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me. I do hope we enjoyed that session and I will see you here again very, very soon.